Hi, good afternoon. It's Dean from Mavstar Observatory. As you can see, we've got some charts which I've modified and we'll be talking about those later on in the video. A uh, quick shout out to those few people that have took us under the wing and give us a bit of financial support over the last few days. And a uh, big thank you to all those that have kept us going um, to this point in time. And, you know, if I can just encourage a few people uh, to, you know, support us a little bit more and we can continue uh, our research here at the observatory um, internationally bringing you the data on probably one of the most important anomalies that humankind is going through so with that as you can see we've got four charts uh, we've got the North Pole uh, migration over years these miles uh, below that we've got CO2 uh, short history of CO2 going back to the 1700s or thereabouts then we have the sunspot numbers and the last three solar cycles in the center and to the right of that we have um, you know a temperature record uh, going back to the 1880s um, I think it's best uh, for us all if I bring up uh, these charts individually and just point out a few uh, important points and this is largely um, an upload to do with something that we are commonly now accepting, which is climate change. Uh, it's something that's in the news a lot. However, you know, I disagree that climate change is being driven by CO2. And, you know, in, in going through these charts, I think you'll agree with me that there could be something else. And I think that there is evidence to support that something else. So, um, you know, if you're interested in an alternative view, let's, let's be safe and insane that it's an, an alternative view on why uh, climate change is taking place now. Um, you know, let's see if we can find some supporting facts that might uh, suggest that it could be something other than CO2. So let's get into it. Let's have a look at them first. Uh, the North Pole migration Vs years and miles. So if we go back 120 years, uh, where the red line is on the North Pole migration years, Vs, miles, we can see that that is the point at where the magnetic poles over the, well, the magnetic pole over the Northern Hemisphere started to begin to migrate. Um, but what I've done interestingly is marked from 1990 uh, a green line on all these charts. And there's a good reason for that because something significantly changes on all these charts from 1990 onwards. But if, the reason why I put the red mark on there is so that we can clearly see, um, and I've put the red mark on all the other charts as well, we can clearly see that there is a starting point for something. Um, and, you know, it's there as a trend in all the charts that we're going to look at. So the last 30 years, you can see that there's been uh, an extra thousand miles in just those 30 years compared to 1990s, uh, sorry, 1900s to 1990, where there was only a 500 uh, mile migration of the North Pole. Um, let's have a look at the, um, uh, you know, the CO2 levels around the same points. So here we are looking at CO2 history going back to 1750. Um, in the green uh, vertical line, you can see I've measured from 1990 to the year 2000. And what we see is an increase of CO2 parts per million, sorry, at 65 parts per million increase over those 30 years. But again, I've marked with a red line going back to the 1900s uh, for the fact that there is a considerably and noticeable change in CO2 levels increasing from the 1900s. Again, on the sunspot numbers, looking at the last three solar cycles, we can see that over the last 30 years, there's been a drop in numbers by 100 uh, spots um, during each cycle. And you can see over the last 33 years or thereabouts, you know, a decline, a massive decline, almost exponential of sunspot numbers dropping off. But I don't think um, it's directly responsible, um, maybe indirectly responsible for added problems to our um, climate today. But I don't think we can say that that it is directly responsible. And the reason why I say that is if we go back over the 400 year sunspot history, we've all heard of the Maunder minimum and the Dalton minimum. But what a lot of people fail uh, to mention when they talk about the Maunder minimum is that the Little Ice Age actually began 
50 years sorry uh, the little ice age actually began 50 years before the sunspot numbers hit zero so you know for that reason i don't say that the sunspots and dwindling sunspots are responsible uh for you know the change that we're experiencing right now in the climate but it could be indirectly linked and the reason why i say that is because i've talked about this a lot of times you know what we do experience when we get low sunspot numbers is a shrinkage of the heliosphere and as a result of that we get more cosmic radiation inbound so you know it doesn't help uh, especially when you know we're in a time where we're going through a magnetic pole reversal because that also weakens our primary uh, defense which is the magnetosphere and again in turn allows more cosmic rays inbound you might at this point get an idea as to where we're going with all these charts so here we are looking at the global land and ocean temperature index uh, going back to the 1880s but what I've done in the red line going vertical up there is just mark out the time period of 1900s because if you look at this temperature chart things really start to increase from the 1900s as they do in the CO2 and we also know there that that was the beginning of the magnetic pole migration over the northern hemisphere so We've got increases in temperature, increases in CO2, and we have a magnetic pole migrating. Uh, just before we go back to looking at all the charts, uh, as you can see, I included uh, the date from 1990 so that we could see how much temperature had increased during that period of time. And as you can see, it's around 0 0.4 or just about half a degree Celsius um, since the 1990s to the current date. And, you know, like I say, the important thing here is when we're looking at the temperature, we can see that from the 1900s, it drops uh, to around about 1910 and then really starts to increase from that point on. So I think we've got uh, a period of time on not just temperature, CO2, but also migration where something is all happening. And um, I just want to put that into try and try and fit that into how that would change our climate then as well as change the temperature and maybe increase the CO2. So now we're looking at all the charts together. Uh, we can see the 1900 by the vertical red line on all the charts, apart from the one in the centre with the sunspot numbers and the last three solar cycles. You know, We did say that that was probably not directly affecting the climate, although it could hinder it by sphere and allowing more cosmic rays into our upper atmosphere, which would cause... Um, cloud seeding platforms and put more water vapor which is also uh, the unspoken uh, co2 gas uh, sorry um, greenhouse gas in our atmosphere and there is far more water uh, vapor in our atmosphere than there is co2 molecules and yet you know this is like one of the uh, unmentioned greenhouse gases uh, commonly by these uh, you know, climate scientists when making their argument for CO2 driving climate. You know, there is a reason why I'm talking about all this is because, you know, we've just heard Biden sign an executive order putting American taxpayers' money back into the Paris Climate Agreement. But it's not going to change things and it's not the cause of climate and people have proven this time and time again now. It's like, you know, we keep singing from the same hymn sheets but no one seems to be listening in any, in any case to what we're saying but the main thing here is in this video is i do want to point out that since the 1900s we know that the magnetic poles which is a rare anomaly began to migrate over the northern hemisphere and we can see that co2 levels start to increase we can see that temperature also starts to increase and we also see large increases when we only go back to the 1990s on all three of these charts you know the magnetic poles migrated a thousand miles in just those 30 years compared to from the 1900s to the 1990s only moving 500 miles you know again when we look at co2 a double of co2 uh, increase in that 30 years by 65 parts per million and again with the temperature almost half a degree celsius in just 30 years my um if I was to put this into context and say what is responsible 
for the climate that we're experiencing now, I would say it was because we started to go into a magnetic pole shift a hundred years ago. And at that point, our heliosphere weakened. It allowed more cosmic rays in, which created vapor platforms or condensation platforms, which in turn put more water vapor in our atmosphere and, you know, modified more so in the last 30 years our jet streams and that's why we're experiencing you know the climatic changes that we are experiencing now um you know the thing is with these scientists is that they're very closed and shut off to alternative views and you know even though a lot of them now know that what they've been saying with regards to co2 causing global warming and in turn you know the climate change that we're experiencing now is a process of that um, is, is wrong and that they should now start to realise that there could be other possibilities such as the earth going through a major anomaly such as the magnetic pole reversal I think that you know on all three of those charts we can see that there has been some dramatic changes which goes starts on and around about the 1900s and increases and intensifies at least from 1990 so you know I wanted to bring that to your attention today guys uh, I think it's sometimes good to look at some charts it's sometimes easier to get the um, trend out of them uh, and especially when you know you you put these uh, vertical lines in that indicates time periods so that we can compare what's going on from that time period but I don't think it is just by coincidence that we are experience climate change as we are right now when a hundred years ago or going back to uh, the 19th century when the poles started to be, uh, migrate we see the changes that we have done that I've um, showed you in this now just I wanted to just say you know uh, with regards to sunspot numbers it leads to the same problem as what we do when we have a weakened magnetosphere during a pole shift it allows more cosmic radiation firstly into our solar system and then with the weakened magnetosphere our primary defense it allows you know those cosmic rays to increase uh, in our upper atmosphere creating seeding platforms so that water can you know condense on and we end up with more water in our upper atmosphere and again it is one of our greenhouse gases that is not commonly talked about but that could be i think more the reason and the cause of why we're experiencing climate change right now and the big uh, woe for me is you know with the Paris climate agreements um, that a lot of countries are tied into now are just taking us down the road in the wrong direction and you know it might be way too late for us to do anything about it even if we could I mean at the end of the day you know CO2 could be increasing naturally and you know we're not at alarming rates at 415 parts per million at this point in time and you know we've been doing their earth health at a glance taking readings nearly every week for a few months now and it's steadily at 415 parts per million and you know the biodiversity that depends on co2 in the atmosphere is only going to thrive as a result of that you know i have showed you guys um, the levels of CO2 in my living room with just me and another person in there go up to 1500 parts per million so how can it be so dangerous when we open the front door and experience 415 parts per million where is the danger in that and if you know plant and other vegetation across the world you know prospers and thrives in an environment where there's more CO2 where is the harm in that CO2 is not causing problems for our climate and it's not human beings that are causing problems for our climate it's very likely started around the 1900s started to really get worse in the last 30 years as we can see and is most likely uh, caused by this rare anomaly that we're going through just thought I'd share that with you guys guys there's a link down there if you want to help support what we do at the observatory and um, the only other thing to say is, you know, you have an amazing day today. Take care of your loved ones. And we'll be back again in a couple of days with uh, Earth Alpha at a glance if you're interested in that. As always, bye for now.